Welcome to another episode of Cards on Bard. My name's Ryan, and in this video, I'm going to show you the three to five player game Kanaloa by Gunter Burkhardt. Kanaloa is a racing trick taking game, and while there's not that many racing trick taking games out there, this one's probably my favorite. The way the trump system works with the uh, ocean cards and how trump can change every trick is really neat. And it allows you to have your hand sort of evolving throughout the game. If you anyone who's played Boast or Nothing, it's kind of a similar sense to that. I think my only minor downside to it is probably how big the deck can be in the lower player counts, which I'll get to a little bit later. Uh, so yeah, I think right now, though, let's just go to the table and I'll show you how to play. The deck in Kanaloa consists of four suits numbered 1 through 12, three Kanaloa cards, and two Octopus cards. The game also comes with five boats and 12 ocean cards. One of the cards has a wave symbol on it that is used as the start location. And then there are four that have a dolphin symbol on it. Taking a closer look at the four suits here, you can see the little tiki's in the middle. And then taking a little deeper look at the sixes and the nines in this game, because this is something I really want to point out, is you need to be careful when you have these cards in your hand, that you make sure you, all of the tiki's in the middle of the card are facing up, because it can be really easy to mess up the six and the nine. Yes, there's the little dot you can see on the nine and the six doesn't have it, but when you flip them over, you can see how the nine actually looks like a six and the six looks like a nine. Looking at the Kanaloa card here, it looks very similar to uh, the rock or Maui from Moana. And then you've got the octopus card here. And then going into the ocean cards, showing you the start player card there that has the ocean wave symbol on it. And then the one that has the dolphin symbol on it. One thing I do want to point out here as well, the backs of these ocean cards have the same exact backs as the playing cards. So when you are putting the game away, you just be careful you don't mix match. And then when you shuffle up the deck and deal out cards, you don't want to deal out ocean cards to players. To set up for a game of Kanaloa, shuffle the ocean cards and place them in a circle face up in the middle of the table. Depending on the player count, you'll remove a certain number of ocean cards from the game. In a five player game, you'll use all 12. A four player game, you'll remove any one ocean card. And a three player game, you'll remove any two ocean cards. In this video, we're gonna set up for a four player game. So we have removed one ocean card and put it back in the box. Now it doesn't really say in the rules, but you do just wanna be careful that whenever you're removing a card that you don't remove the card that has the start location icon. So if that is the one that ends up getting left out, just swap it for the other card instead. Next, you'll place all boats on that starting space, having them face in a clockwise direction. Next, shuffle the main deck and deal out eight cards per player and choose a random start player. The rest of the undealt cards will be placed to the side for now. Kanaloa is played over an indeterminate amount of rounds with each complete round consisting of eight tricks. At the beginning of the round, the lead player will pick any one card from their hand and play it face up. So the white player will be the start player and they're gonna play this blue 12. And then it goes to the purple player and they must play any card that they have in their hand that matches the lead suit since Kanaloa is a must follow trick taker. So they do have that dark blue as well. So they would have to play that card. Then coming to the yellow player, they also have this dark blue, so they'll choose to play that six. And then the black player, looks like they have that dark blue too, so they'll play that as well. So now the winner of the trick will simply be the highest of that lead suit. So the white player played the highest card and they will get to move their boat forward one space. We then clear out the cards. The white player would then lead the next trick, playing any one card they want to. And looking at their hand, they now no longer have any blue cards, but one thing they wanna keep in mind is what is the trump suit for the current trick? Because in Kanaloa, as you can see, all these map cards, all the ocean cards 
have the colors that correspond to the suits on the cards. The player that is currently in first place will determine what is the trump suit for that current trick. As long as that player stays in first place, that suit will be the trump suit. So currently right now, the white player is in the lead, so red is the trump suit. At the beginning of the game, when all the players are at the start space, trump is that dark blue color, which was played in the first trick. But coming here with the white player uh, leading the first trick, they do have this 11 red, which is a nice high powerful trump card, but maybe they wanna save that for later. So right now they're just gonna play that three green. We come over to the purple player. They have a green card, so they must play that. However, they also have this Kanaloa card which is a special card that can be played at any time, regardless of if you have cards that you could play for the must follow rule. So the purple player could play any one of these four cards, but they can't play these because they have the green. So they're gonna choose to play this Kanaloa card though. We come over to the yellow player. They do have three greens and they will choose to play that 10 since they know they're not winning because the Kanaloa card is in the trick. And then coming to the black player, they also have a green card, but they have the other type of special card, which is the octopus card. This can also be played at any time, regardless of if you have a card that has the must follow rule. So they could choose to play that octopus now. Once an octopus is played into a trick, the player who played that card must immediately trigger its effect, which is to destroy any one unoccupied ocean card on the board. Unoccupied simply means there's no boat on it. So any one of these cards, they could simply take off the board right now and then shorten it so now the track has become smaller. The only time you cannot remove an ocean card, like I said, is when it is occupied or if there are only three ocean cards remaining. So you're gonna slowly be removing these as octopus cards get played. If it ever comes down to only having three cards on the map, you cannot remove any. So the octopus card essentially just becomes a lost card. And the Kanaloa card is the strongest card, so it is gonna win this trick here. So the purple player would win this trick and they're gonna move their boat one space forward. However, you can never occupy the same space as another boat, except for the starting space. So the purple player is actually gonna leapfrog over the white player and land on that dark blue space. They would then lead the next trick, playing any one card they want, but again, being mindful that the trump suit has now changed because purple is in first place, the dark blue becomes the trump suit and it's no longer red. So they don't actually have that dark blue, but looking ahead and seeing what could become trump, they know that if any other player wins a trick, they will leapfrog over into this green suit, which they do have three cards of, might not be the best ones, but they still have them. So maybe right now, they wanna play this dark green to try and force out some greens from some other players, so when it becomes Trump, they might have a better chance of winning. So they're gonna play that green one. It then comes over to the yellow player, which only has the 11 or 12, so they'll choose to play that 11. We then come to the black player, they'll choose to play that seven. And the white player is actually gonna to choose to play their Kanaloa card. So now in both tricks where we've had a Kanaloa card, there's only ever been one in the trick, so it's easy to say they're gonna win. However, if multiple Kanaloa cards get played into the same trick, the later one played would win. So just to show as an example, if the black player played a Kanaloa card, then the white player played a Kanaloa card, white would win because theirs came later. But going back to how we had it, they would still win the trick, move their boat forward one space, leapfrog over into the green space. Trick play will continue like this until all eight tricks have been played, at which point the winner of the last trick gets to remove any one unoccupied ocean card from the game, similar to the way the octopus card does. Just wanna go over this last space on one of these cards here, and that's the dolphin. Whenever a player wins a trick and moves their boat onto a space with a dolphin, if the space in front of them 
and behind them are empty, they get to move an additional space for free. So in this case, if the black player would move their boat onto that dolphin, they don't get that extra movement because there is a boat in front of them. But let's say the white player would win a trick right now. They move on to this dolphin space. There's no one behind them or in front of them. So they get one free extra move. To win Kanaloa, the player who is in first place needs to have their boat overlap the player who is in last. The second they do that, that player immediately wins. So if we fast forward it a few rounds, and let's say the setup looked like this, where white was currently the first place player, and they win this next trick, they would move forward one space, leapfrogging over the black player, who is currently in last, and white has now won the game. One thing that can be a little bit difficult though in this game is as you can see, once it starts to become a smaller map, it's really hard to tell who's in first, who's in last, etc. So what I always like to do is the player whose boat is in last place, have it face backwards. That way all players can see these boats are facing this way and that one boat's facing that way, so it is the one that's currently in last place. If the game is not ended, you will reshuffle all of the cards, deal out eight cards to all players, and the player who won the last trick of the previous round will lead the next trick. There is a variant in this game, and that is the zero tricks variant, and that is where players can announce at the beginning of the round that they will take zero tricks. You do this by laying your boat on its side before the first trick has taken place. If at the end of all eight tricks, you've managed to take zero tricks, you will pick your boat up and then move it three spaces, leapfrogging over any boats. So if the white player took a zero tricks, they'd move one, leapfrog over both of those for two, leapfrog over purple for three. This can be a really good way to move really far at the end of the round if you think you have a bad hand. However, if you take even a single trick, when you lift your boat up, you simply leave it there. You don't move at all. So the zero tricks can be sort of high risk, high reward. The other thing you also have to be careful about is you lay your boat down during the round to show you will not move at all until the end. And that means that even if you do take a trick during the round, you don't get to move. And if the person in first place starts to get closer to you, you can't move ahead during the game as they potentially leapfrog over you and win. Even if you ended up taking zero tricks, the game would end as soon as they pass you. There is another variant which technically isn't in the actual rule book, uh, but it's one that I came up with that I really like, and that is having a smaller deck size depending on your player count. In a three or four player game, when you're only dealing eight cards per player, there's a lot of deck that's undealt. And for players that might not like that amount of randomness or not enough information in the card play, if you do it where in a three player game, you only use the numbers one to six, there would only be five undealt cards. A four player game, you'd use one through nine, which would leave nine undealt cards. And then in the five player game, you use all one through 12, which leaves 13 undealt cards. So it's a lot better, I think, than something like this. In a four-player game, you have this many undealt cards. Uh, so something you might want to try. I, again, still, I personally recommend you try it the way it's written first because it's still a very enjoyable game. But for people who want to know a little bit more information about what's in the deck, then you'd want to do that. Now that you know how to play, I'm sure you're wondering where you can buy it. And I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is, unfortunately, both websites where I know this game is sold on are out of stock on both Philibert and Uplay. I believe right now the game is currently either in between printings or out of print. When you go to the publisher's website, Piatnik, there's no information about where you could purchase it or anything. It just shows you the information about the game. However, there is some good news. The game is available on Tabletopia and you can play for free. You can play online or use the local hot seat for all three player counts. 
Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Kanaloa. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching.